All right, here we are back for part three of <laughs> slip casting, uh, take, going from the uh, Fimo original of a bowl to a ceramic piece. So we have allowed the slip or liquid clay to sit in here for a while. And as you can see, we've gotten shrinkage, and it's also firmed up a bit. It's not quite so squishy. Now, if you let it dry out too much, it will start cracking, and it'll develop other problems, and it won't be as easy to work with. And if you try to take it out too early, when it's still too liquid, it's going to be unmanageable because it's going to be too malleable and it's just going to deform very badly. Uh, the description that I've had from other people as to the best consistency for this stuff is when it is a leather-like consistency. Now, I also realized that I had missed a step on the previous uh, part two. Uh, you pour the clay in, you let it sit, uh, and then you pour the clay out after you've got the uh, uh, the uh, thickness you want. But then you're supposed to take the mold and turn it upside down and lay it so it drains a bit to get rid of the excess. It's not a huge problem, but I just thought I'd throw that in there since I had forgotten that step. Since, as I said, I haven't done this in a few years. All right, so now we're going to be taking this piece out of the mold. And depending on the mold, this can be more or less involved. Uh, this particular mold is a little finicky. In this case, we take the mold, which is rather heavy, just clearing away some of the debris so we're not going to run into it in this process. And we are turning the mold upside down. And we take off the rubber bands, which, as I said before, should be better than the ones I'm using. And once again, here you can see where the clay leaked out of the bottom because the mold is kind of wearing out. Taking off the rubber bands. And there we go. So the rubber bands are off. And let's see if we can get this apart without damaging the piece. So far, of course, if it's just a simple two piece mold rather than <laughs> this monstrosity, uh, you're going to have a much easier time of it. The teeth on this one are the trickiest part to get to come out. As you can see, they all seem to be pretty good. Although, with this, you still have to go in and re-detail a lot of this, since the mold is not perfect to begin with and is wearing out. I've made a couple hundred of these skull bowls over the years, and the molds don't last forever. we have it. Now, even though it has firmed up quite a bit, it is going to be too soft to manipulate very much in this state. 
So what you do is you rest it on whichever side is the best one. In this case, uh, resting it upside down is the best way for this particular piece. And once it's firm enough, we'll flip it over to dry further. And then we'll be coming in with a uh, X-Acto knife and a sponge and some water and we'll be removing these mold lines for one thing which you have to some degree or other on any molding project and then also we will be smoothing them out by lightly dissolving the surface with a sponge or a damp cloth and just smoothing it out. There are lots of little it little icks and imperfections on this. So that is the next part of the process and it's a little involved. I don't know if I'll do a video on it or not, uh, but at some point I'll pick this up and show you, has, show you this as it comes along. Uh, that's it for this step and here we have our piece out of the mold. See you next time.